What's up gamers? Barnes here. Over right, here in my backyard. Got a couple side yards. Over there in the backyard. And a massive front yard. We're at the Chestnut. This is our house here. We're at the Chestnut Lawn House here in Helenville, New York. One thing about the Chestnut Lawn House is that uh, it was one of the houses where artists during the Hudson River School of Art were bringing images of the New World home to Europe stayed. We got one of those, you know, markers out front, state markers. You know, back when that was happening, because we were in Palinville, New York, and Palinville was uh, the first spontaneous artist colony in the United States. Actually, it predates the United States. And we're right here at the foot of the Catskill Mountains. But uh, in 1819, there was a book written. <clears throat> and it started a legend, and it changed actually the name of these mountains from the Blue Mountains back to the Catskills, which was the Dutch. Stuyvesant wrote a book about a man who lives somewhere around here near where I do, named Rip Van Winkle. And Rip lives somewhere around here, right along this creek here, back in what it was, Falling Waters, New Amsterdam, before the Treaty of Breda, which ceded the Dutch East India Company's possessions to the French and the English. But one day, I don't know, afternoon, fall afternoon, much like today, old Rip came here in the backyard. Now there's roads and houses up there on the ledge, but he came back here. And there's this creek back here that we rent part of our property. Um, got some old swimming holes. And him and his dog, Wolfie, went for a walk back towards the creek. We'll take a walk down there. <clears throat> you can see that the vegetation's pretty much gone now. Normally I can't see the creek from my house in the summertime or spring. But he walked down here <clears throat> and he saw the oddest thing. There were men dressed in antique Dutch wear and they were calling out his name, Rip, asking him for help with the keg. So Rip decided to oblige them <clears throat> and him and his dog, Wolfie, the company of the men. Oh wow, we got the stone wall. I never even realized we had. <clears throat> um, he got his men to accompany him up and help the men carry the keg. They carry the keg up to a waterfall, which is a couple miles up the road here, maybe a mile and a half. The road upstream. Sec Catskill waterfall, second largest waterfall in our, uh, New York. <laughs> United States in New York, second largest waterfall in New York. And uh, <coughs> it had like an amper like theater. It was all carved out from the water. And the men were drinking there and carrying on and playing a game of nine pins. And they offered him a drink. And Rip took the drink. There's an old swingy bridge, it's now one of the hurricanes actually knocked it out. Kind of a bum, I'd like to have this bridge on my property. But, uh... Yeah. <clears throat> he took a drink and he went fast asleep. And when he woke up, his gun had rested, his beard had grown several feet, his hair had grown very long. <clears throat> and, uh... 40 years had passed. He'd gone back to town and met some of his children, realized that King George was out and George Washington was in. Now, this is an example of a very powerful concoction, a sleep, well, being a role-playing game, a very powerful concoction, a very powerful sleep elixir. 40 years of sleep. I don't know if you would, how you make that happen in a game, but it's a tale that's been re be told. So Rip goes into town here in Palinville or Falling Waters, New Amsterdam, Palinville, New York, whatever you want to call it. And he realizes that 40 years has gone by. <clears throat> now the only reason why I brought this up is because uh, Martin over at um, Grognard had this appendix ending and since I figured I had this 
you know, American legend. It's, it's, it's really just a fictional tale, but it's, it's changed our, our landscape a little bit. At least, you know, the book changed the mountains from the Blue Mountains, the English Blue Mountains, back to the Dutch Catskills. But uh, has anybody ever used that length of, of uh, that kind of magic, that length of sleep spell? Or has anybody had a character that's been uh, in a coma for 40 years or whatever? You know, I was trying to think of something I could use for Appendix N. And so this Rip Van Winkle story. There's a, he wrote a lot of stories about our area, Peter Slavitz and Hendon's Horseman happened near here, supposedly. And nobody's exactly sure where. They're all fictional, of course. But I ask you guys, have you ever had a character that's been out for decades or decades or very long periods of time and then reawoken in a world that wasn't quite the same? I guess it's kind of a Planet of the Apes type of deal, sort of. Anyway, that's me on Appendix N. I'm Rip Van Winkle in my backyard. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you soon.